You are listening to The Pulse, Rod Murray's e-learning tech podcast. COVID Converted Edition number 5, Class Technologies, interview with Michael Chasen. That little teaser was a piece called Run from the New Age Piano album, Lines Build Walls by Aaron Starks. As you may guess, I really like New Age Piano, and you can listen to the full song at the end of my podcast. Today's podcast episode is sponsored by D2L. You may know their main product, the Brightspace Learning Management System. I, of course, would only accept sponsorship from companies and products that I'm very fond of. So please check out their website at d2l.com slash pulse podcast to learn more. In the interest of full disclosure, my institution, the University of the Sciences, uses D2L Brightspace. I also invite you to follow me on Twitter. My handle is Rods Pods. As always, I post links to the things we talk about on my show notes website at www.rodspulsepodcast.com. My topic today is an interview with Michael Chasen, co-founder and the CEO of Class Technologies Incorporated. As you will see, quote, Class adds teaching and learning tools to Zoom, making virtual classrooms feel like real classrooms, end quote. You know, it's not often I get excited about educational technology. Well, that's not true. I get excited all the time. But this particular application really looks good to me, especially since it helps to make synchronous teaching online really easy and useful, especially during our COVID converted teaching these days. The name Michael Chasen may sound familiar. That's probably because he was the president of Blackboard for 15 years. So I'm really happy to have been able to interview Michael Chasen about his new venture. We talk about his background and how Class for Zoom was developed. It has some very, very cool features. If you're teaching on Zoom a lot, you'll be interested to find out that class takes attendance, allows you to give much more sophisticated tests, surveys, even proctored exams. You can have a one-on-one student conversation without the rest of the class hearing you. And one of the best features is multiple gallery seating charts. So you can view by name, by order of when the student raised their hand, and a participation view. So find those students who haven't been participating and call on them. Class allows you to measure engagement using some extensive analytics. And one of the best parts as we tend to move back into class is that you can have a combined in-person and remote student class. So this truly allows high flex classroom situations. So if you have a camera in your on-ground classroom, they can participate along with your remote students without having to have an AV tech nearby. So uh, another feature is you can monitor multiple Zoom rooms simultaneously. And of course, it integrates with the LMS. So without further ado, here's my interview with Michael Chasen. Michael, I'm so happy to uh, be able to talk to you today. Um, How are you doing in this uh, COVID COVID world? Uh, Well, incredibly excited to be here. And uh, look, I think uh, uh, COVID has uh, certainly affected uh, myself and my family the same way it's affected a a lot of families, uh, not just here in the United States, but around the world. And uh, that was one of the impetuses behind uh, me starting uh, class technologies. Uh, I have three small children who I saw the challenges that they were having, really engaging in the classroom. They were all uh, at home, all the teachers were using Zoom. And we just saw both uh, the challenges that the teachers were having in trying to engage the students and and the challenges the students were having in trying to absorb and learn the material in what was now a completely full-time remote environment. Um, And and that's when I came up uh, with my co-founder, Wes, uh, the idea to create Class for Zoom. Well, you certainly anticipated one of my uh, questions, uh, how how you got, how you thought of that. Uh, I, I can understand that, you know. I bet my audience knows your name, but just in case they don't, why don't you tell us a little bit about your background and how you got involved with uh, starting Class Technologies? Well, uh, before Class Technologies, I was actually the co-founder and CEO of Blackboard, which is a large e-learning software company that both K-12 through uh, institutions and colleges and universities around the world would use to start putting their course material online. Uh, people use Blackboard a little bit more in an asynchronous way. You would still go to class twice a week, but you'd get your course syllabus online, take tests and quizzes online, communicate with your fellow students and teachers online. And some schools use uh, Blackboard for full-blown distance learning as well. Uh, 
Now, years later, I, I, as I mentioned, I was home uh, during the pandemic with my children and uh, saw the challenges that they were having, and both because of my background in uh, ed tech and in raising three children who were uh, in second grade, uh, eighth grade, and 10th grade at the time, uh, I, I saw that Zoom seemed like a great platform to start putting the, the courses online, but it didn't really allow teachers to do everything that they were used to in the, in the physical classroom. I talked to a lot of teachers and they said, look, Zoom is terrific for lectures and it's great for group conversation, but we do a whole lot more than that in the classroom. In a physical class, we, we do everything from taking attendance, we hand out assignments, we might give tests or quizzes, we do work together in class, we proctor exams, we talk a lot on one with students who might do group projects, as well as using the internet or playing video and all these other things in addition to the lecturing and the group conversation. And uh, both because of my background in Blackboard and uh, my background in technology, and I was aware that Zoom had an SDK that was out, although it wasn't uh, widely used. Um, I was uh, working closely with my uh, co-founder, uh, Wes, who had uh, said, hey, you know, maybe we can use some of these, um, uh, some of this SDK to start bringing some teaching learning tools into the Zoom environment to make it more engaging for, for the students. And so the two of us started working together to uh, develop a class uh, for Zoom, uh, to develop teaching and learning tools that can be used in the Zoom environment. You know, uh, last spring when um, the pandemic hit us all and uh, I, you know, I'm, I'm fond of, uh, in fact, uh, my latest position has to do with uh, uh, Sciences Online, which is totally asynchronous online programs, you know, quite different than what we started to call emergency teaching using Zoom <laughs> and uh, not, thinking that that's the best way to learn, you know, uh, on the other hand, having faculty who've essentially never taught online before, all of a sudden being thrown into the Zoom world um, and not being able to uh, do what they used to do in the class um, and being intimidated by the technology and frustrated and not having somebody, uh, some AV guy on their, on the side to uh, to help them uh, with the technology. We thought, uh, you know, what, what's, how's this going to evolve? So um, tell me a little bit more, uh, a little more detail about how your product, I assume it, it so you, you would have to have a license for, for Zoom as most schools do these days. So this is an, sort of an add-on license through your company. And um, does it just hook into the existing Zoom transparently or is there another version of Zoom or what, uh, how's that work? What's it like? So, so we, we, we utilize the hugely uh, scalable and secure Zoom backend for all the audio and video capabilities, and of course, the Zoom UI that teachers and students around the world are already familiar with. But you do download a separate version of Zoom, a class, a separate front enhanced front end, really, that not only has all the features of Zoom, but adds things like attendance and test taking and proctoring and one-on-one -on -one communication with the students and dashboards and assignments and a whole host of other features that teachers really need to better run a class. <clears throat> so the uh, teacher can uh, download it and they can either also have the students download a uh, class and then it provides a much more rich, fully immersive experience, or just the teachers can be using class and students can actually use regular Zoom. And in which case, a lot of the, the additional features are seen through the chat. What I mean by that is if a teacher goes ahead and launches a test, for example, if the students in class resume, the test pops right up. They start taking the test uh, just as they would if the teacher handed out a test in a, in a regular classroom. But if a student has Zoom, they'll get a chat message. They'll say, hey, your teacher has sent you an exam. Uh, click here, and it'll launch it in a browser window. Or similarly, if uh, we uh, added one-on-one -on -one, um, chat features to Zoom, um, meaning that a, a teacher or a TA can click on a student, they can actually talk live in the class one-on-one -on -one where no one else can hear them. Just like they would in a regular class if the teacher wanted to walk up to a desk and have a conversation with the student because they were having some trouble. Um, so in classroom Zoom, it just pops right up. It's an immersive experience. But if the student is using just regular Zoom, they'll get a chat message. The teacher would like to speak to you, click here, and it launches that chat in a, in a browser window. So our system is completely backward compatible. We'll work on regular Zoom for all the students, but it's a better experience if everybody has class. Very cool. Now, when you say the student doesn't have to uh, use your flavor of Zoom, is there a separate cost for them? How, how is that priced out in terms of students as opposed to the institution? So 
we really ride on top of the license for Zoom. So if a school has a license for Zoom um, and they either might have a license for all the faculty or they may have a license for all the faculty and the students, our product just works with their Zoom login under that same license structure. So some schools have gone ahead and purchased mass Zoom licenses for everyone. Some schools have purchased Zoom licenses for the faculty and then the students log in for free because you only, um, in many cases, need to have a license for Zoom for the person hosting the meeting. Uh, and of course, you can invite people to attend. So Zoom has both license structures and we found that schools are leaning a little bit more towards having everybody have a, a full license in Zoom, but there are some that just get licensed for, for the faculty and, and our system is run for both of them. I see, you know, you, you mentioned, um... Proctoring, that, that's really uh, an issue uh, these days, you know, especially for high stakes exams. How does proctoring work uh, in, in your platform? Well, there are a lot of great proctoring solutions that are out there that are uh, have more advanced technology, um, but at the same time, more costly, difficult to use. We tried to take a, an approach where we wanted to put proctoring in the hands of the teachers and the TAs that we could use frequently, not just for high stakes exams, but for midterms and finals, or even just assignments during class. So what our proctoring allows the teacher to do is not only see the face of the student like you would in regular Zoom, but also see what's going on in their desktop. And you can see actually multiple students at the same time. So you can actually see how are they progressing during the exam? Do they have anything up on their desktop that they're not supposed to have um, or they're using? But I mean, not just to prevent cheating, we also have proctoring to enable the teachers and the TAs to uh, engage and help the students. They can actually see, oh, the student's having a problem. They can go ahead and click on their screen, make their desktop screen, full size so the teacher can say, oh, I see what you're doing wrong with this math problem. Let me give you some advice and, and help. So we have a very, very basic uh, level of proctoring capability that can be used anytime by the teachers and the teams with really no advanced training, additional camera setup or anything like that. Uh, that, is, that is very cool. You know, I'm hearing more, I didn't know what the word meant, uh, high flex, high flex environment. But um, if, I, if I understand your um, website that, uh, your product allows you to combine a, a live classroom setting with online students. I know that's been very difficult to do using other technologies. I mean, at, at minimum, you have to have uh, some, you know, expert uh, uh, you know, student helper or somebody there to, to uh, help the instructor. So how can you combine a live classroom with the online students as well? Sure, well, let, let me tackle that in two ways. So first of all, we do think that there is going to be a bunch of schools that implement a kind of a hybrid uh, system uh, of education as we're kind of coming out towards the end of COVID, meaning that um, some students will attend in person, but some students have the option to attend at home or they might do alternating days. So we've added some functionality within our software. For example, we have a dedicated classroom camp that the teacher can actually set up in Zoom and that has a kind of an eye to the classroom while other people are, are logged in, but they can always then view the whole class. So we do a few things like that to make it, uh, to support that kind of modal learning where there are some people in person and, and some people attending remotely. But when we talk about um, uh, um, having the, the, the physical class online, what we're really talking about is we give the teacher all the tools that they would typically have in the physical class and enable them to, to move all those online. So you're not really running two separate systems. You, you don't have to have Zoom and then a separate testing system or a separate attendance system or take attendance in class and some people are online. You can write from within Zoom, for example, simply take attendance of everyone who's both uh, you know, on Zoom or who's uh, there in person. You can very easily hand out an exam. It can be handed out uh, on Zoom to people who are both uh, just online or even people can actually take in the class. So it's creating that one environment that brings all of the aspects that a teacher and all of the uh, items a teacher typically needs in their physical classroom into an online environment. Wow. Yeah. I, I you know, we, we, we've been through several um, proctoring solutions and um, you know, they're, they're somewhat uh, clumsy um, and then you have to integrate it with whatever testing system you're using. So certainly a plus to have this all sort of rolled into one. And, and it's um, really within Zoom, which is the product that they're all using all day long. So it's not that's a, right. Yeah, that's where the real uh, benefits of a close integration. But. You know, I, we we talk about Zoom fatigue. You know, I'm sure people. <laughs> I can't imagine, especially K to twelve. I can't imagine getting uh, students' attention. You know, for more than uh, used to be. Oh, you have their attention for twenty minutes. You know, <laughs> hour after hour. So. 
I suppose this would allow more interactivity uh, because you have all these other tools at your disposal. Um, There's just more that you can do in the class. Yeah. So now you're not just lecturing the whole time. You can say, okay, I've just given this lecture. Now I want everyone to work on this assignment live in Zoom. Write a summary of how you think the story should have ended, and it's due in 20 minutes, or it's due the end of class. Or the teacher could say, you know what, I want to make sure everyone understands this material. Let me launch a quick assessment. Or it's time to, to give you a surprise quiz or a test. And people can actually take that live with Zoom. The teachers can proctor it, see how the students are doing. They can come over if a student's having a problem. They have a one-on-one -on -one private discussion with them and help them. It really adds so many more components and dimensions to the typical class experience that it, it creates a more engaging environment. Now, within this sort of the, the I, I should say, the, the stock Zoom, uh, you can create breakout rooms. And I can imagine faculty using those breakout rooms. And I believe the instructor can move from room to room to check on the rooms, you know, for these maybe small group assignments. Um, what uh, do you add features to, to that capability as well? So that's been one of the most requested areas for feature improvement. Now, our version one of the product that just came out today has the same breakout rooms that Zoom has but already under development, we're adding a number of additional features that will really allow teachers to better monitor those other rooms and engage with them. Like, for example, the ability to see multiple rooms on the screen all at the same time. So you can actually watch and, in fact, even listen to multiple rooms to see what the level of engagement is and then to very easily move between them without having to log out and log back into each of the rooms. So those are some of the top requests we've heard. And then we're adding some other features into breakout rooms, like the ability to hit that assignments into the individual, individual room the ability to have better dashboard tracking in the individual rooms. So you can really understand what's going on without the teacher having to you know, be there or jump around each of the rooms. So all those are features that uh, you can expect to, to see coming out in the next several months. Very cool. Um, you know, students can sort of hide, especially if it's a large classroom and, and, and with the stock Zoom, you know, I forget how many you can see on the screen at any one time. So the faculty always had to be uh, you know, if they, if they were concerned, uh, if everybody was getting it, they would have to, I don't know what they did. <laughs> they maybe call on them or so uh, when you have the, um, you know, the, the, uh, all the boxes, all the, all the little windows on screen, how, how does your system help to improve uh, that scenario? So we have um, what we call seating chart, which is what Zoom calls views. Um, and so Zoom comes with two views. They have a standard view uh, uh, and a, a gallery view. And what we did was we took that and really expanded it. So we added things like an alphabetical view. We list all the students in alphabetical order. So especially if you have a large uh, class at Victory College and have a large two or 300 person or more class, well, now you can actually find the students on the screen to be able to better engage with them. We added a hand raised view. We put the students in order that they raised their hands. You know, what's so fascinating mm -hmm. is that Teachers can actually remember in the physical classroom when students raise their hand, they kind of have an idea, oh, I should call on Tom because he raised his hand 20 minutes ago. I don't want to get too far ahead of the lesson. But it's almost impossible to do, especially with, with um, uh, student videos that may span multiple pages, to see when people are raising their hands. And yet you want to make sure that you're addressing the questions as you go along and have a timely and engaging conversation. So we have a view that lists the students in the order in which they raise their hands. So you know, oh, hey, I should call Lindsay because she raised her hand first about 10 minutes ago before I get too far ahead in the lesson. We have another view that will showcase just the students giving you feedback. So as you're giving a lecture, you can actually just look at it on the screen and say, oh, hey, a lot of the students are telling me I'm speaking too quickly. Or um, they don't understand the material if you dive into it in more detail. And it's these different views that let the teacher better manage and engage in the class. Very interesting. Yeah, I, in terms of student uh, engagement, um, are there automated scores to, um, to I, I, I'm trying to remember what application it was uh, a while back. I forget, we've been through so many different web conferencing tools over the years. Um, one system would uh, indicate whether um, the web conferencing was uh, front and center, if it was, had the focus of, of uh, on that, student's browser or was just hiding behind uh, some other windows. How can you determine the actual engagement that the students actually, besides, you know, looking at them, if you had a large class, is there some scoring that's done that uh, measures their engagement? Sure, in, in, in three different ways. So the first thing and the most powerful is we have a detailed dashboard that collects a huge amount of data that lets both the teachers or then even the, the principals, superintendents of schools do analysis to see what type of engagement is happening in the class. So we can actually tell 
how long the teacher has held class for, how long the teacher has spoken for, how long the students have spoken for, how many kids raised their hand, how many gave feedback, the type of engagement that they've had, how many handed out an assignment, how many turned it in, the grades that they've gotten. So it's a huge amount of data that you can really do to do a deep analysis and see the level of participation. In addition, I was talking earlier just about those, uh, those seating charts. We have a seating chart that's called participation view. We list the students in order by how much they're talking during class, either semester to date or just for this class. Because wow. <laughs> everyone who's talked semester to date, oh, hey, uh, John hasn't really spoken at all this semester. I better make sure to call on him to get him engaged in the class. <laughs> that is so cool. And then lastly, we do have a feature called loose focus tracking, where the teacher is alerted if class resume isn't the primary app up on the desktop of the student. Now, that doesn't mean that they're not paying attention. They, of course, could have Zoom up and just be looking at their email on the side. But this way, the teacher knows to then maybe re-engage with the student and make sure that they're paying attention. So we have the, a full dashboard. We have a dedicated seating chart based on uh, participation time in the class. And we have a, a, a alert if the uh, application itself is the primary app up on the desktop. And all those combined, I think, really give uh, the teachers the extra bit of data that they need to see what type of engagement that they're getting. Wow. Uh... Well, I'm sure you know coming coming from the LMS uh, arena, you 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 know all these uh, needs and wants, and it looks like you've you've thought of everything. I don't know. Um, speaking of the LMS, uh, do you uh, integrate with uh, with the LMS to feedback uh, some of this data? Is it just um, a score, or uh, how does that work? Attendance? Sure. So we use uh, the LTI standards from uh, IMS. Uh, which uh, I, I can say that uh, at Blackboard we had a, a part in contributing to. Um, so we know the standards very well. And we have made sure that our product has a high level of LTI integration so that we can do things like if, uh, of course, uh, class comes with a built-in grade book, but if you're using a, a third-party grade book, you have it in your, um, you know, your Lucian or your data tele or SMT system, or you're using a Blackboard or a Structure or Moodle, we can easily export the grades, you know, the attendance data using LTI, uh, and sync between those systems seamlessly. Sounds sounds great. Um, uh, you now you you just uh, tell tell us a little bit more about your your launch. Uh, you were in, I guess, uh, some sort of pilot mode for a while. How many institutions? Uh, you know, what's your main audience? Is it K twelve? Is it higher ed? How's that going? Uh, so right now, I'd say we're about split 50-50 K twelve in uh, higher education. Uh, the really interesting thing is we uh, first kind of announced the company when we did our first round of financing, gosh, not more than probably uh, uh, maybe uh, 16 uh, weeks ago or so. And uh, just over the time period, we've received over 10,000 inbound leads, schools calling us saying that they're interested in the technology. So, I mean, this was mind blowing. I, I mean, I only had a, uh, you know, a handful of employees. We gave everybody a thousand schools and just said, hey, start, start calling people back. So we were overwhelmed with the amount of interest that we've got from the industry. Um, all that being said, uh, we've had about 100 schools in our uh, beta and uh, pilot testing program um, over the last uh, few months that have been uh, giving us great feedback on the software as we continue to make improvements and develop it. Uh, as you said, uh, today we actually launched the Mac version for general availability. And then we have our Windows, iPad, and Android, and Chrome versions that'll all be coming out you know, in about the next month or so. Interesting. Um, yeah, I was. I, I did notice that. I was surprised that uh, you came out with Macs first. Uh, what what made, uh, wh why'd you make that decision? Um, also, it, would this be, a, um, once Windows comes out, did you also mention Chromebooks or, because I know Chromebooks has a- Yeah, yeah, really so, yeah. so we're P12. supporting iPad, Android, and Chromebook, uh, and uh, those, that and Windows will all be out in the next month or so. Is there anything that um, faculty or uh, the students using the, the system in the pilot uh, uh, arena uh, that surprised you? Things that that you ended up changing because of feedback you were getting. You know, the the interesting thing to me was for all these great complex features that we built into the product, it was some of the simplest stuff that the teachers said were uh, the most uh, game changing for them, like hand raised view. So it's a simple sorting order to put the students in the order in which they raise their hand. And teachers said that literally made it possible for them to have an engaging conversation in the class. They weren't able to do it before because they'd get 20 minutes ahead of the lesson and ask a question. And then finally, a student would raise their hand and ask a question that was, you know, that, that, that topic had already passed. So they said that actually made it possible 
for them to literally hold the class and have a engaging, converse, timely conversation that they want to walk. So what was interesting to me was it wasn't some of the more advanced features, uh, like the ability to have all these great interactive uh, polls or you know over uh, a dozen different question types or assessment engine, but simply the sort orders the teacher said, hey, this is actually what's allowing me to be successful in the class. <laughs> interesting. The, the, other, the, other, the other thing that really stood out was um, a lot of teachers said to us, the ability to have one-on-one -on -one conversations you know, they said there's a whole group of students almost in every class that are either just very quiet or shy and they don't want to speak up and they, and they won't ask a question so they don't want to embarrass themselves in front of the class or they they just uh, for some reason or another don't like broadcasting uh, you know, themselves out to the group and in zoom it's just not possible to therefore go up and say oh hey let me let me help you with this issue and they feel that they're losing a portion of the class so we built one-on-one -on -one conversations where the teacher and the ta can go ahead and click on a student they don't leave zoom but they can have a private conversation within zoom that only the two of them can hear so now a student can raise their hand and say, oh, can I talk to you privately? And the teacher can go over, oh, you're having problems with this. Let me help you. Or the TA during the class, while the teacher's teaching, a TA can go over to a student, just like the one in a real class, walk up to them at the desk, have a conversation and, and help them with whatever problem they're having. And when you think about it, I mean, it, it's so fascinating. But if I literally told you today that there are hundreds of thousands of classes online and yet teachers can't take attendance online, can't hand out assignments, can't proctor exams, can't talk one-on-one -on -one with the students, you would say, well, how are they even being successful at, at really reaching out to these students and engaging with them if you don't have all those components? The idea of Class Resume was to bring all those components online so the teachers themselves could folks trade on orchestrating the classroom and engaging with the students. You know, I, I'm trying to think of what, is there something that you forgot? <laughs> what, um, you know, uh, it, for example, in Zoom, um, the polling is very primitive. So, um, especially in higher ed, you might like to ask much more complex kinds of questions. Uh, what what sort of question types do you have that would uh, be great for a higher ed? Oh, well, look, especially even in our assessment engine, we have everything, not only your true, false, and your matching, your multiple choice, but we have calculated questions and you can randomize the questions, the numbers. And so it's really everything you see in a full testing engine we built uh, into the assessment engine in Zoom. And then at the same time, we really enhanced the, the polling uh, as well. You can do anonymous polls. You could um, uh, uh, do interactive polls. And uh, we have a whole bunch of additional poll questions uh, as well because we wanted polling to be an active, engaging part of the class. Interesting. I, I think I, I noticed uh, just recently that uh, Zoom allows um, live uh, captioning. I think that was something they just turned on. Is uh, I assume that's still available, and is there anything that you add to that experience? Uh, so that's really out in, uh, in limited testing for Zoom right now, but they, uh, from my understanding, are planning to build full uh, uh, captioning capabilities uh, within the Zoom product, and of course, we'll use that not just for accessibility, but for, for note-taking within the class as well, once that's available. Very cool. <laughs> Wow, it's, um, I can imagine you're going to be very successful coming from uh, your background. Uh, you know how all this stuff works. Uh, uh, I would love to get it into our own institution because, uh, you know, the way, the way the pandemic's going, I don't know when we're all going to be comfortable coming back to, to campus again. So I see this hanging around for a while. Um, what... Uh, else would you like to tell to tell us uh, that maybe we didn't cover? Uh, it sounds like you're, you're in the process of adding more features. Um, anything we missed you would like to leave our audience with? Well, well look, I mean, it's, it's very easy to kind of get caught up in what's happening today. So a lot of people talk to us about using this technology and say, oh my goodness, I have to have this today because I need to reach out to these students that are just uh, having challenges uh, engaging in the class uh, from home. But I, I believe that, and even though, of course, COVID was a horrible experience, I, I think it's actually going to have a positive effect on education. And, and I think it's changed education forever. Uh, it easily sped up the adoption of technology by five to 10 years. And now you have, uh, you, you can't suddenly train hundreds of thousands of teachers and millions of students in online education and not expect there to be long-term, big, positive ramifications. So I think what you're going to see is you're going to see all schools starting to use online learning, whether that's to offer uh, more programs or different programs or connecting to other schools to offer classes that they previously couldn't. And even though higher ed had already started adopting this technology over the last several years that we saw with 
uh, uh, Blackboard, you know, K-12 is a little bit, you know, further behind and wasn't fully using online. Well, I think that's going to change. And I think you're going to see, therefore, more programs coming online, which is going to lower cost and increase access to education. And I think that's going to be a tremendous positive benefit. And I think you're not only going to see it here in the United States, but around the world. I think education in the ed tech sector is the place to be. I think that's where the most improvements are going to be made. And, and it's not just improvements in how technology is deployed, but fundamental improvements in the way that people learn. And uh, here at class, we're just excited to be part of that conversation. Yeah, you know, uh, not too long ago, I interviewed a uh, president of a, um, of a university that um, was very traditional, conservative, I would say. And um, they were... They didn't have any online courses, but they were thrown into this pandemic and they had to move online like everybody else. And so I, I, I asked uh, I asked them, um, what, uh, what what do you think is going to change uh, when we go back to to normal? And I was surprised at their their answer. They said, well, I think this online stuff is great. I said, well, we can have we can have people from all over the world coming and talking to our class. I'm thinking, yeah, that's why we've been I've been uh, you know uh, banging the drum here at my institution for you know for ten years to uh, to do more and more online. And uh, it seems like um, uh, this product class for for Zoom is is really it's going to fill a really important niche. I. Um, I really uh, wish you the best of luck, and uh, and um, I will uh, certainly like to get my hands on it. Do, do you have a pilot uh, way to to kick the tires? Uh, how does that work? I, I can certainly uh, get you signed up for that. And uh, for institutions that are interested, please just visit class.com. Uh, please contact us if you haven't already. We'd love to, to sit down and, and begin the conversation. Great. I will pass that on. Thank you so much, uh, Michael. I appreciate your time. Thank you very much. I enjoy having the opportunity to chat. I look forward to continuing the conversation. Very good. So that's my interview for this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. I really learned a lot. I'm really anxious to get my hands on class and give it a try. Stay tuned for the full piece, Run, by Aaron Starks. Until next time, have a great week.
that's it for today's episode. Thank you very much for listening. Don't forget to give Rod feedback. You can leave comments on his blog or send email to rod at rodspulsepodcast.com. The preceding audio commentary is the product of the author, Dr. Rodney Murray, and does not represent the official viewpoint of the University of the Sciences or any other institution or company.